What's up guys, CP Morty here, back with another video, and today we're taking a look at the newly released iMac Pro, or, well, at least by the time this video comes out, just the iMac Pro, so it'll be a couple weeks by the time this video actually comes out. Now, we've done a couple videos on this guy already, so if you want to check them out, they should be popping up there or down in that description box, where we really speculated about what the iMac Pro might actually have under the hood before it actually comes out, and well iMac Pro is out, let's take a look at what it has under the hood and let's see if we can spec out a better PC or at least just something similar to the actual iMac Pro itself. But first and foremost, let's see what we got with the iMac Pro. So let's kick it off with the CPU. And in the last video, I speculated we would see a Xeon W chip as Intel released this new lineup of chips for no real reason. There wasn't a market for it, no one was really calling for a Xeon at a lower price point but without as many Xeon features, not exactly all of us really knew why it came out, unless you were also too following over on the Apple side, where we knew we were getting some new high-end machines, but they weren't exactly carrying the full price tag of the full iMac Pro, or rather the full Mac Pro, they were the iMac Pro. So. In terms of the chips, we are looking at the Xeon W family over on the iMac Pro side. Now, whether we'll see the Mac Pro coming out in 2018 with Xeon W chips, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm actually sort of not so surprised that we saw Xeon W chips on these iMac Pros, and you can also too tell that I said that in the last video. Now, in terms of RAM, we were also too looking at DDR4 RAM, which we all knew was going to be coming down the line. This is also to ECC stuff. However, in the last video, we did talk about how it could also to potentially be user upgradable. As some units have gone out to some people, we've also do found out that they're not fully exactly upgradable. I do believe that they are full size DDR4 ECC modules, so theoretically, if you were to rip this guy apart and actually have a look in there, I think uh, you would be able to actually just see full size DDR4 modules in there and probably put some in. However, they're not usable upgradable. You, there is no flap on the back of the iMac Pro to actually put in any of this RAM. As we kind of speculated originally, it does look like, unfortunately, it's sort of, you get the RAM and that's basically it right there. However, again, the X-ray looking images out of Apple also to show that they're fairly long looking, so I wouldn't be surprised if Apple's just used standard DDR4 ECC RAM modules for their desktop machines and just saying that they're not upgradable because technically speaking, you'd have to break the gasket around the actual screen to get into it and yeah, it'll just go downhill really, really fast. But in terms of RAM, 128 gigs, not too surprising there, but kind of unfortunately, there is no flap there. Storage is also too slightly a little bit interesting interesting here, so sure we don't actually know whether they're running a RAID setup, but we do know that again it is 1, 2 or 4 terabytes of storage, but again there is no mention of RAID. And taking again a look at this shot right here, it still looks like these guys are going to be your storage modules. We've had no real information about whether they're using M.2 or some sort of external device. It does look to be that these actual storage units are soldered onto the motherboard, and I wouldn't be surprised if again these um, little chips right here are going to be your storage drives. Now, if you sort of think about it, it's not going to be the actual VRAM because the VRAM would be mounted over here with the video card. It's obviously not the RAM itself because, well, you can see the chips right there. So again, these modules right here do happen to look like what I believe to be the storage options being one, two, or four terabyte storage drives. Now, so far we do know that they are very fast, but we are going to have to wait for a teardown to confirm whether these chips are going to be actually our SSD or the just some random chips that Apple has in their images, but I do believe uh, it is going to be at least somewhat of a semi-custom job for this particular machine. Now, video cards wise, we've kind of known this for a while, it's a Vega 56 or 54, rather 56 and 64, rather if I get those naming conventions right. Both of these are part of the pro branding, meaning they have slightly better specifications and also to much more VRAM than their typical brothers, and of course we're also to looking at that awesome and very nice looking 5K display. At the time of recording, the 18 core editions aren't even out yet and also two 14 cores are yet to come out with only the 8 and 10 core options on pre-order and they're coming out next week as of the time of recording. So by the time this video comes out, they should be out unless I've messed up all my release schedule. Either way, they're coming out soon, but so far we've had reports that the 10 core model that is out and about for some reviews out there is performing at over 25 better performance than the last generation top tier Mac Pro, which is really awesome to see. So so 
this new generation of iMac Pro is actually pretty decently specced. But let's face it, we're PC people, we love building computers, I mean these parts behind me are definitely a show of that. So let's see if we can actually spec out an iMac Pro like system without spending the iMac Pro price. So for the iMac Pro that we do want to compare today, we are looking at the 18 core Xeon W with 128 gigs of RAM, which again it's not really upgradable RAM so it's best to get as much as we need today and not really worry about the future because 8K and also to 4K HDR are definitely around the corner and both of them will be eating up RAM faster than, well, whatever else eats up RAM, such as Chrome tabs. Now storage wise, I just left it at one terabyte of an SSD, mainly because personally when I'm doing pro tasks, if I have really large files, I like to keep them on mechanical drives as if those drives fails, I could easily send them off to a recoverer and get those drives recovered rather than having large SSD drives for all my main projects and then having everything lost. Don't get me wrong, that uh, one terabyte drive should be okay for a small enough caching drive, but if you really wanted to go 100% SSD, you're probably best just to go with some external RAID array, especially on an all-in-one iMac Pro type of device. So one terabyte SSD is going to be perfect enough for me and also to a lot of other people out there, because again, let's face it, one terabyte is still a lot of storage for a system, and it's pretty fast SSD at that. Now in terms of actual storage, because there's no other internal drives, you would have to go with externals, so we're not going to include external storage in the price of this, but usually if I was being uh, actually picking up one of these kind of machines, I probably would also to factor in something like a Drobo or a Pegasus RAID drive. Now also too, I spec'd it out with a Vega 64 video card as well, and that's about it for the iMac Pro. Now price-wise, we're looking at 15939 Australian dollars, a very expensive machine, and also too, in terms of price tag, I wasn't too far off, I said something around that $15 price point uh, in one one of the previous videos, but $15,900 is quite a big budget. So let's jump over to PC Part Picker and take a look at what we picked up. Now in terms of the CPU, we wanted to go 18 core as well, so we grabbed ourselves the Intel Xeon E5-2697. Now whilst this isn't a Xeon W or really anything out of the latest generation, it is based on Broadwell and the X99 chipset can also to run these chips, so it is definitely going to be built on a very stable and also to well tested platform. Personally, as someone who does do some pro applications, I would rather take last generation and have the stability that comes with it and all the support, rather than the latest generation, a bit more performance but a whole ton of instabilities. Now the iMac Pro is a little bit of an exception to this as Apple puts in millions if not billions of dollars into testing and R&D, so in terms of stability they're going to be mostly rock solid out of the box, but on the PC side, sure it may be Broadwell but it's delivering us 18 cores, 2.3 GHz just like the iMac offering, so we should be pretty much fine here. To keep this guy cool, we're looking at the Noctua NHD 15. This is basically the same as the 14, which I do personally run on my own system, and that thing runs super cool. I can have literally no fans on it, and it is pretty cool. So an 18-core CPU should be able to be kept very cool with this particular CPU cooler. And under load, it should be also too not too bad there. Now, we could have gone for a water cooling unit. However, as this would be a pro-type application machine, I really didn't want to put a water cooler in there. For me personally, when it comes to pro tasks and water cooling, they should not go in the same machines, mainly because water cooling adds more points of failure and also too, well, if it fails, it could failure spectacularly and just spray water all over the system. The last thing you want to do is get up in the morning to find your workstation that just cost you like $10,000, $20,000 has just dumped water all over itself. It's all completely dead and there's no warranty because no warranty is going to cover water damage when it comes to PC components. So for high-end applications and pro application type PCs, I'm going to go air all the way. Motherboard wise, we are looking at the X99A from MSI, SLI Plus motherboard. It's not too bad, it's nothing really too special, it's not so you super high-end stuff, but has a very nice stealth black colour scheme and overall will connect everything up and do the job just fine and also do have some pretty stable BIOS releases, which isn't too bad. Sure, it's not a workstation grade motherboard, and we could have spent a couple extra hundred, even as close to a thousand dollars, on getting a workstation grade motherboard, but it's going to get the job done. I've actually built with this particular motherboard, and I can say it's actually fairly reliable. In terms of RAM, we did need to grab something that was ECC supported, so we grabbed ourselves 128 gigs of crucial ECC RAM. 
for a very, very high price. In fact, I could buy my top spec Dell XPS 15 again if I wanted to pick up this much RAM. As DRAM processes have shot through the roof here at the end of 2017, uh, this guy is definitely not cheap, coming in at just under $2,000 for this particular RAM kit. Unfortunately, PC Pod Picker doesn't really list ECC RAM, so I did have to do some digging on the internet, but for around $2,000, we've picked ourselves up 128 gigs of RAM. Now, to be fair, Apple charges $3,000, so they're only charging about $1,000 more for their particular kit, but damn, RAM is expensive. And video card wise, it was a pretty obvious choice, we grabbed ourselves an AMD Radeon Vega RX 64, however this guy only comes with 8 gigs of RAM versus the Vega Pro that comes with 16 gigs of HBM2. It's a bit of a downside, unfortunately we didn't go with the Vega Pro and it's a bit hard to get our hands on there, but... At the end of the day, it is still similarly spec to what we're seeing here, so it's still going to do a job, but it's a bit of a letdown that we didn't necessarily get the Vega Pro like what we saw in the iMac Pro. Now, case-wise, we just threw it in a Corsair 750D. It's a decently priced motherboard with decent storage and also to decent airflow. It's going to be fairly neutral. I picked this up because if you're doing ProTask, you don't want like a super blingy gamer case. It's all black. It's pretty stealth. It has a window if you do want to have a look in there, but definitely would look great on the floor or under a desk or hidden away somewhere as well. Now because this case is sort of in that mid-range price point, if you did want to buy something that's a little bit different, you would still have plenty of budget to buy that other case. But it looks clean, it looks simple, and isn't too half that bad there. Now power supply wise, I grabbed ourselves a 1000 watt 80 plus platinum Corsair HDX power supply. The reason why I grabbed this particular unit was because it's going to deliver us plenty of power now and have a little bit of overhead if we want to throw in, say, a different video card in the future, or if we just wanted to throw in another couple of Video cards easily could be done or even some storage in there and uh, speaking of storage however we did grab ourselves a one terabyte Samsung Evo drive nothing too special but still a Samsung SSD one terabyte gonna be fast and good nevertheless now because the iMac Pro is an all-in-one unit we did have to grab ourselves some peripherals including Wi-Fi speakers and keyboard mice all that kind of stuff so Wi-Fi wise we grabbed ourselves the Asus PCE88 which is an absolute boss wireless card I think I checked it out right there we also do grabbed ourselves the the Logitech Z200 speaker set. Sure, they're not going to be any studio file grade audio, but for the sake of just matching the craptastic speakers that are usually in an iMac, which are actually getting better in recent generations, but are still not really the greatest, we did pick these guys up here. Now, I also do expect you guys who are going to be editing video and doing some pro apps on this type of a machine to also to have your own pair of headphones or studio uh, monitors, so I'm not too worried about that, but we did throw in some speakers just to kind of keep the two builds relatively fair. And then finally, we grabbed ourselves the Rapu 900p keyboard and mouse set, as it's a chiclet style keyboard and also to the mouse isn't too bad it's not really my favorite mouse out there but the keyboard and mouse in this set relatively matches what the iMac Pro can deliver they also do somewhat space gray we have one of the mouse right here it is a nice gray color scheme so it is going to actually match uh, the color scheme of the iMac Pro but we don't get the trackpad unfortunately Oh, and also too, I guess we also did grab a copy of Windows 10 Pro to run this whole machine. Now, the display though was the hardest part. The iMac Pro comes with a super gorgeous 5K high resolution display. Honestly, if I could take an iMac Pro display or even just an iMac display at that, 5K resolution and run it on my desk, honestly, I would. Those displays, in my opinion, look super, super sweet. Unfortunately, on the PC side, we're having a hard time even getting 4K displays working. Now, don't get me wrong, Dell released a 5K display for a little while. LG has their ultra sharp or ultra fine rather displays and that's kind of there, but on the 5K display side, it is really, really hard. Again, Dell actually discontinued their 5K display after Apple released the 5K iMac and also to LG came out with the ultra fine monitors. So that was a bit of a letdown. We could have gone with an LG ultra fine for this particular build. However, had it has been kind of well noted at this point that they don't exactly play 100% nice with PCs. Don't get me wrong, you can still plug an ultra fine display into a PC and it will start working, but for the build that we have right here, we don't exactly have a USB-C display output, which is what you need to run this guy, and it's going to have to have some stuff going on and it just kind of goes downhill really fast. So for the sake of this video, what we did was we kind of pretended that we could still get uh, the Dell 5K display and we used that for our build. So for this build, we did try to grab the Dell 5K 5K display. Now, again, it isn't on the market. It has been discontinued and you can't really get it unless you do get a used one. It is still a fairly nice monitor, but 
when it comes to the Windows side, 5K isn't really supported and you'll be better served by going with a couple 1440p displays that are super color accurate and super nice. But with that being said, our total price point, even with that 5K display, comes to $11,051. About 4K less than what Apple is offering. But personally, if I was a pro user going down the line of dropping over $10,000 on a computer, I possibly would be more leaning towards the iMac Pro side. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, why would you do that? You could be saving $4,000. Now $4,000 is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, that's really awesome. But when it comes to Windows 10, Windows 10 already hates 4K screens, so going for a 5K one isn't really going to be doing us many favours. Also to that, Vega card on the PC side is not the world's most powerful offering. We all know for a fact at this point that Apple and Apple software does a lot of incorporation with their hardware, so basically when they release a new piece of software, they're only really releasing that software to about a thousand different devices, whereas on the PC side you're releasing to millions of different hardware combination, meaning the Vega cards on the Apple side are going to be performing a lot better than what they would be doing over on the PC side. Now, with that being said, we did save $4,000, meaning we could drop that screen back to a 1440p display and lose our 5K issues. We could also to then bump up our video cards to something like a dual 1080 Ti or even a Titan a video card and absolutely blow the iMac Pro out of the water. Again, at this point in time, it's a little bit early to draw any conclusions as to whether spec for spec the PC would be better or the Mac would be better, but it also too comes down to your workflow and whether a Mac does work for you, but $4,000 is definitely a nice saving that you would get by going on the PC side. And again, if you did want to use a bit of that $4,000, you could blow that iMac away with again 1080 Ti's or even a Titan and you would have no issues there. So if you were then going to build a PC, it's kind of a no-brainer right there. But if you were specking out an iMac Pro with a similarly spec PC, I'm actually really interested to see what kind of performance we'd get as this is one of the first generations of iMacs that we're kind of seeing very similar kind of specs to what we would have on the Pro side anyway. But with that being said, I'm curious to see how this guy performs, so I'll definitely be keeping my eye on that. Otherwise, guys, let me know down in that comment section what you think of the iMac Pro. Definitely they're super expensive, but do you think they're actually worth it for the performance that they squeeze into such a thin form factor? In fact, the edge of an iMac is thinner than my mobile phone. So, for the fact that that is definitely a feat of engineering, let me know down below. Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.